Good morning. Um, welcome to our webinar this morning as part of our October series. And this is our first event um, looking at festivals and artists as part of Creative Europe, uh, the Creative Europe program. This morning, we have Katie Larry, myself and Katie Larry. Um, we are both uh, delivering the webinar, but also we are joined by Kath Gorman, Head of Participation and Engagement with Cork Midsummer Festival and subsequently with Be Part, Art, Be Art, Beyond Part Participation. And also we're joined by the lead artists on two different projects within Be Part, Marie Brett, and um, visual artist. Hi, Marie. Thanks to both of you. And we'll be talking to you in a second. Um, so just to look a little bit about the kind of overall aims of the October series as part of our Creative um, the Creative Europe Culture Office. So overall, uh, the Culture Office wanted to look back over the Irish projects, projects as part of Creative Europe program, which is currently coming to its end, the, the current one. Um, and we'll be looking at projects from 2017 to 2020. Um, these projects look at the, their working within local communities and audiences and artists, artists um, looking at activities being developed locally and presented on the ground. Um, and we just kind of wanted to look a little bit about that, how that, how that works, um, because there is a kind of a perception that Creative Europe projects are, are very much international and they happen in, in Europe, but, but with Irish partners and projects, obviously a lot of the work is developed on the ground. Um, and do, we just wanted to look a little bit about uh, at how organizations and individual artists get huge benefits from working with each other, but also in uh, working in international networks um, and developing audiences for their own work and practice um, within Europe. So today's webinar, I'm going to give a little introduction on the broader context of working at the European Union level with Creative Europe. Um, obviously, we're going to talk to Kath uh, Gorman and to Marie about both their their experiences from the point of view of an organization within Creative Europe and also as an individual artist. Um, then we'll come back to look at next steps, particularly about if you want to develop, you're looking at developing a project for um, within a partnership for a Creative Europe pr uh, program. Um, and also for individual artists. Um, and just to say throughout the, the session today, uh, we, there's the option to do uh, to ask questions through our chat function. So you'll see that on the right hand side of the webinar page on uh, on your computer and you can uh, put questions to all of us. Um, and I suppose we can keep the ones for Kath and Marie towards the end as well, because they'll be talking, they're presenting, so they won't be able to answer. But Katie is going to moderate. Thank you, Katie. Um, so she'll be looking through the questions throughout the session. So just looking at that broader context of working at EU level, um, the European Union developed an agenda for culture in 2018, um, and this looked at harnessing the power of culture and cultural diversity for social cohesion and well-being by promoting cultural participation, the mobility of artists and the protection of heritage. And this is their overall agenda for culture across all of their strands. And this trickles down into the priorities of the Creative Europe program. And as I mentioned, our current program is coming to an end um, at the end of this year. And the next program will start in 2020 and run until 2027. And, and just coming out of current issues and current uh, kind of areas of importance, um, focuses are going to be on digital adaptations, which is obvious because everybody is moving online, I guess, um, at the moment. Um, they'll also be looking at gender equality, social inclusion and green Europe will be kind of focus points for the next programme. Overall, the priorities for the Creative Europe programme are transnational mobility of arts and artworks, artists and artworks of uh, capacity building within organizations, of audience development, intercultural dialogue. And in 2018, the European Year of Cultural Heritage was run, but then kind of coming out of that, uh, it has become a priority within uh, the, the program. 
So how to work at European level, what funding is available. So there's the support within uh, for culture, the subculture program it is called. And under that, there are various strands, um, the support for cooperation projects um, and cooperation projects are transnational collaborations between uh, organizations in eligible, eligible countries, looking at um, programming activi activities over a number of years, and obviously looking at those priorities, pro professional development, capacity building, um, tran transnational mobility of artists and such. Um, and they can be either small or large with a minimum of three um, co eligible countries. Um, and B part um, is actually a cooperation project as well. So we look a little bit about that um, through Kath's presentation. Um, so the support for European networks is another area of um, another strand. Um, this looks at uh, organizations becoming a network across Europe. Um, and at the moment, 109 Irish art, um, organizations are part of uh, 18 networks within Europe. And this is a really important growing area for Irish organizations um, because they become part of a network uh, of kind of like-minded organizations or organizations they, they would like to uh, connect, connect with. Um, and they look at professional development of cultural workers within the sectors uh, through peer learning, peer exchange. And in a way, these can be little stepping stones for organizations to go on to develop a, a, a cooperation project or a creative year project out of those connections. And we've seen that happen before uh, with Irish partners. Um, support for European platforms are another area similar to networks, but is more specifically um, related to emerging, showcasing emerging artists. Um, and stimulating EU programming of activities for those artists across Europe. And again, some Irish organizations have been part of platforms and have then gone on to develop Creative Europe projects with those partners. And um, support for literary translations is what it says it is. It's for translating literary works. And again, the, the support for linguistic diversity there across Europe uh, promoting the, the different languages within the European Union and also supporting transnational circulation of those works, which is important within Europe. Um, and then for Mobility Award for Individual Artists is one um, that was developed as a pilot, the Iper in 2018. And there were three calls over 2018, 2019. And seven Irish artists across the art forms had been successful in this area. Um, and have traveled across Europe with different uh, projects, including residencies, professional development training, um, meetings, setting up meetings with different producers, curators um, and stuff across Europe. So these are really important awards for individual artists. Um, and this there'll be a new call for this um, at the end of this year, which is great. So we will promote that and we can send you links for that afterwards. Um, so I'll leave it there. I'll come back to our next steps at the end, which will be just a little bit about how you might want to develop um, a project and the next steps towards that. Um, so I will hand you over to Kath. As I said, Kath Corman is the head of participation and engagement with Cork Midsummer Festival and subsequently be part as well, Kath. Um, so I'll stop my presentation um, and hand it over to you, Kath. Thanks. Thanks. So, um, Aoife, will you be, I'll be clicking forward the presentation, but um, yeah, you got it your end. Sorry. Yeah, I've, I sh it should have started there. Sorry. There we go. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. So, good morning, everybody. Um, great to be here today. Um, just to talk a bit about our experiences of Creative Europe Project, obviously in relation to, to BPART, which is a, a large scale cooperation grant. And we're now sort of um, in our sort of first year, really, of it, running through until 2023. Um, but actually, this is the second project that we've been involved in. The, the, the first one um, would have been uh, a, a small scale project um, called Circus 250 Diverse Real Physical, which was around sort of celebrating the 250th anniversary um, of modern day circus. And... Um, I think what was great about it was it was a really good way of sort of 
introducing us to the sort of, I guess, the cooperation grant sort of process, essentially. Um, we're also the lead partner, Crying Out Loud, would have been an organization that we would have, uh, the festival, would have, have a relationship there as well. So I think that's a sort of really good sort of way in, um, in terms of these sort of, I guess, um, European style, style projects. Um, with regards to um, to be part, um, essentially, um, and actually I'm going to, sorry, jumping a bit back, I'm going to go a little bit back on this this project here, the Circus 2, 215. I know we'll talk a bit about it a bit more in the sort of the, the Q&A as, as well, um, was it was a, a four-country partnership um, between Crying Out Loud, Le Pleu Petit Cirque du Monde in Paris and Subtopia in Sweden and ourselves. And um, it was focusing on one project using a sort of residency style model in each of the, the different, different cities. Um, and then with one lead artist selected from each country with more artists from the, the UK as the, the lead artist. And then for Cork, we brought in additional sort of Irish artists as well. Um, I think what was really successful around it was a sort of real skills exchange sharing a huge amount of learning as well for us in terms of audience development, but also in terms of what, what we need to do when we're doing sort of work of scale as well. And um, I think that was a real sort of value in, in this, these types of sort of Creative Europe projects for us in terms of being able to do potentially more ambitious work as well, particularly at, a, at an international level. Um, in terms of B parts, that actually sort of came around through a sort of chance conversation um, back in um, 2010, 2011, the, the festival um, in, in co-production with Campo, a Belgium creation house, developed a show called FML with 15 um, court teenagers. And um, that went on to have a sort of national Irish tour, but also went and toured um, internationally as well, including in Helsinki. And one of the partners I kept in touch with just sort of very loosely, in Chiasma, and um, when I happened to sort of be, I'd, luckily enough, had gone to their Helsinki festival, um, arranged a meeting for a coffee just by chance or discussions. He said that they were sort of looking at developing a, a large scale Creative Europe application in relation to the, the themes of sort of artistry arts practice and looking at the sort of ethics and co creation um, of that in terms of how you might work with different communities of interest and place. And um, at the time, the, the, the festival sort of in recent years, we've really sort of honed our strategy in this area. It's, it's always an area of interest and we've been strong in, but in more, we've been taking a more strategic approach as well. So actually we were sort of, as potential partners, we were sort of quite ready. Um, and we made the pitch to Arts Admin who were one of the other partners as well. And then it involved a series of conversations and um, they could see the value of having an Irish partner as well. Um, so we, um, we were invited on, on board right at the sort of last minute. But I think it was felt that there was a flexibility there in terms of the program design that it was going to work for ourselves at the festival as well. Um, so I've got here sort of essentially the, the sort of main key aspects of it. So you can see it's all around sort of participatory practice. It's around sort of exchanging good practice as well and the sort of wider dissemination um, and um, looking at that sort of in terms of sustainability in terms of this sort of type of, type of work. Um, in terms of it's again there's a sort of focus on mobility the idea of artists sort of traveling across cities both um we're going to have a series of irish um artists working on residencies and then here um through the festival but also the idea is that they will also go elsewhere um through we have four there's going to be four sort of assemblies that are run by um four different of the other sort of partner countries um, and then also a critical network as, as well um, of artists who are sort of outside eye in terms of the, the whole sort of partnership program, but also in terms of specific projects that we may be doing. And having that sort of access to that expertise as well would be, be very helpful. Um, so this sort of just talking a little bit more, I think one of the good things that the way that it's been designed and that's been led by the lead Italian partner, the Santa Angelo Festival, was that 
we have the sort of structure of the the four sort of assemblies each each year um but actually in terms of the partner activities we can be quite flexible when those can be and actually that has been really helpful um particularly in light of the sort of current challenges that we're dealing in relation to to COVID-19 so actually we were able to sort of bring forward one small scale residency that we um, originally had sort of planned for, for later on. Um, in terms of our sort of current plans, we've got a major project that has been started um, called Grow House, which is exploring um, themes of um, modern day slavery, particularly in relation to trafficked victims in, incarcerated in cannabis houses. And, um, and that is a a project that we've been developing with artist um, Marie Brett and that has been sort of gone through a sort of quite intense research process and we're continuing that as well. It was originally planned for this year and unfortunately in, in light of COVID-19 and the, the festival in its original format, um, we're not able to go ahead. Um, but what we did do was we created an, an alternative um, festival called Mid Midsummer Moments um, and essentially it was a sort of COVID compliant edition. And that was actually where the small scale residency that I referred to earlier, the activity that we perhaps, or the residency that we've been thinking about having later on, we were able to bring, bring forward. Um, and this is, I guess it sort of comes back to the festival's approach in terms of work that is considered sort of socially engaged or work with communities of interest is that we're taking a more sort of a long-term strategic approach in that using a sort of residency-based model is where often some of the work that we are doing in this area might arise from. And it's about that sort of longer-term engagement and building up those sort of relationships of trust with individuals, but also other cross-sectoral agencies that we're working with. And actually um, the, the sort of a project idea for the small scale residency came out of something that was funded through the Arts Council's Invitation to Collaboration program. Um, and it was using a sort of creative inquiry model into arts and aging and how can the festival better meet the needs of older audiences. Um, and through an open call process, um, we through a sort of submission, um, Marie was invited to um, create this residency uh, cultural law um, and from that, when we will have the festival, we'll have to sort of look at, well, what might be the alternative version of the festival for this this year? One of the things was, well, is there something that we could potentially do there in terms of cultural law? What were the sort of some of the themes that perhaps she wasn't able to investigate during the original residency and might have resonance in, in terms of the situation we're living in, in now? Um, and that is how the, the, the digital artwork, Day of the Straws, came, came about, which um, Marie will, will talk a little bit in her presentation. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a million, uh, Kath. That was really interesting to see um, how Beeport kind of developed, how, how that conversation started, as you say, by a chance uh, coffee uh, with a partner so it's just interesting to see how these major projects kind of develop and obviously you were at, at a good time in your own development um, so Ka, uh, Marie sorry we will look at your video um, and the clip which is a documentation of Dave the Straws um, and do you want to introduce it a little bit before I play it? Yeah, sure, Aoife, just to say a few things to contextualise it slightly. I suppose um, I've been looking at an 1830s story from Ireland um, about the cholera pandemic, and I thought it had real resonance in terms of what we were beginning to experience in early lockdown. And I spoke to Kath about this story, which is to do with um, an apparition and how... Um, the Virgin Mary said to people in Ireland, to protect yourself, you should take the ash that's underneath my feet and form a chain with it across the country. So to take the ash and take it to four um, households and those four households to pass it on. And I kind of thought there was something in that that related to a, a kind of a cultural law of um, which what we, we were all doing then in terms of baking and gardening and home remedies, but also a sense of hope. And then perhaps the relevance of fake news and quack cures um so i said might might we 
um, I suppose, spark a kind of creative curiosity as a participatory project online and ask people um, what coping strategies they have and what hope they have within the within the pandemic we're experiencing. And so this little clip is um, a kind of a documentary of some people responding to how they engage with the work and a little bit of the work itself. Brilliant. Great. Thanks. Thanks. See you. Bye. of um, totem animals from the tops of your sticks I just love this idea of viewing this quality of a creature or some supernatural force or energy or you know positive thinking in the stick. The sticks came from the old shillelagh uh, which was an Irish fighting stick it was um, a stick that was used by rural people at fairs at markets it was also used in faction fighting. I think in line with the um, David Strauss is more about people being actually being active, not on the surface, but also on the deeper levels of themselves. People being very proactively engaged in own healing. I think it's something that the modern society has kind of somewhat forgotten. But the whole thing for me really had to represent the hope because I do have faith, because I do feel there's a greater plan. <laughs> Great, Marie, that's so brilliant. It's such a great uh, documentation. It really gets a sense of people uh, engaging and other participants online, but also just a, a, a nice mix of p snippets of the work as well. It's really great. Thank you. Um, so just, we're going to have a little chat. Um, just to start with you, Marie, I suppose this Day of the Straws um, as, is one of the projects that you worked on um, and it has grown legs as well, I think. Um, but just from kind of before that, what attracted you to be part of a Creative Europe um, international project? Was it about your growing your practice or being amongst EU practitioners or, or what was attractive for you? Yeah, I suppose sort of at the stage when it was looking at Grow House being part and being part through that project. I mean, I think there's always it's always brilliant to kind of step outside your practice um, and to look internationally in terms of a whole different way of thinking about the work. Um, but within the specifics of collaboratory and, and participatory, and I suppose I'd kind of what really excited me was this kind of idea of getting in at the underbelly because I might be able to go and see work or hear about work or see documentation of work, but to actually be able to hear at the stage of genesis of ideas and development of ideas, but also the underbelly from the, the people who are making the work. Um, so, you know, whether it's the communities, the artists, the, the, the producers, the, the kind of organisations, that kind of hidden stuff um, in terms of people's motivations and their methods, their concepts, their ideas that, you don't, that I wouldn't always get to hear about. 
Um, and I suppose I kind of felt um, in very safe hands <laughs> with, with Court Midsummer. I kind of had great respect for their work and they, they kind of, I feel they're kind of leading in terms of participatory practice in Ireland. So I kind of um, felt that but um, then, then as well as, I suppose, an exchange, there'd, there'd be a way of me showing some of the work that I've done and that we were going to do, as well as learning, so a kind of reciprocity. But also, I suppose, I'd cut, if I'm honest, I'd kind of hoped that you know, there might be new works and new opportunities down the line um, in terms of that unknown. Um, so, you know, say now with Day of the Straws, there might be opportunities to do other things with it. Um, and I suppose that's, that's an unknown element and that's the thing. Thing with, with kind of participatory practice there are aspects that the process leads the work so um but i knew that there'd be an exchange and so um that, and that's really exciting and especially um for it to be international and nine partners is a lot and very distinct and different um kind of settings and types of organizations and and cultures so yeah i mean amazing amazing opportunity i was excited yeah and we talked, or, or um, Kat mentioned there, that there was also kind of a route, a route your pathway a little bit through invitation to collaboration, the Arts Council. Um, so in a way, you kind of use that in a, as a stepping stone to to get to work with Cork Midsummer Festival. That's exactly right. Uh, and I suppose um, the, the, um, the Grow House project came from kind of earlier work that, that um, I've done with Kath and we could talk about that later on or you know um, we, could, we could go into that but I suppose in terms of specifically now um, the, we had a conversation Kath and myself Kath had the idea of a grow house project and this idea of kind of um, people being entrapped and enslaved within the bigger context of, of um, migration um, and I've been doing a fair few kind of social justice related projects um, and so we did a, um, a bit of to and froing. We did a tiny research project, and that was a good opportunity for me to to get a sense of yeah, I, this consolidates. I really want to pursue this project, and there's a, there's a lot here. Um, and then I applied to the Arts Council for project award funding, and Kath applied for the funding. So we kind of came together in terms of um, trying to realise it. Um, and um, as Kath said separately, the day of the straws came through a kind of a different form of open call. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's now forefronted because the girl has been put, put on pause for a minute. Mm. That's so great. We're both doing different funding streams. Yeah, but it is, it's interesting uh, just to bring that together, you know, just how those different streams can work together in the end, you know, can kind of, kind of come together at some point. Um, I suppose, yeah, being a bit kind of strategic about it, really. Um, and Kath, I just wanted Definitely to ask you... The project award. Sorry, I, sorry, I cut you off there a little bit. Um, I just was... No, you're fine, carry on. Um, we, we'll come back to that. But Kath, um, just looking at the kind of the, the elements of, of a creative Europe, like project like yeah. this um, and what you mentioned the critical network earlier there and how important that is for um, like for Cork Midsummer Festival but also for Be Part and having that kind of international feedback and that critical network how, how does that feedback in for you? Um, I think it's because I think the, the practice we're doing here in Ireland is brilliant. I think actually we're, we're doing so much really strong work in the area of participatory practice, but it's it's always really useful to hear different perspectives as well, different ways of working. So I think that's when it it comes into that sort of outside eye, and and that again that sort of sharing and, and learning, and sometimes it's reaffir you know reaffirming in terms of what you know, but also actually I think it's. It's also looking potentially, I know certainly in the, the last Creative Europe project, there was a lot we learned just purely around communication you know, on an intercultural level as well. Um, and, and in terms of working on an international based project, I think was, was really, really helpful. Um, I think also the supporting artists in their professional development going through a project like this is really valuable as well in terms of their networks already there was something that just came through from the italian league um and that 
I sort of passed on to someone else that, you know, one of the creative collaborators in terms of the, um, the Grow House pro project. I mean, it's an open call, but it's just having access to those sort of networks at, a, at an international level, I think, you know. Um, yeah. That, that, and also just seeing what's happened now, the, obviously with the Circus 250 project, we're further down the line, that, that project is finished now. But just seeing um, Matt Zekarek, who's the, the lead um, artist um, for, for Ireland, for, for the piece of work that became Union for Black, the, the circus sort of dance hip hop production, he's continuing to partner with one of the other lead artists from the, the Swedish partner from Subtopia, and then working with some of the other team, team members. And he's since had, they've had, they're creating a new piece of work. They since has residences at Subtopia and they have plenty of um, Mond, and it's a, a piece that is now sort of looking at tour, touring as well. So in terms of seeing that, I think is very, the benefits there, obviously to the organization, um, but also for artists as well. I think that can only be a good thing in terms of, you know, practice here, in terms of supporting the practice of Irish artists here, Irish-based artists here, yeah. Yeah. Um, just looking there at um, the kind of we were talking a bit about uh, the, the legacy when we were talking earlier um, about legacy of projects and how they kind of, you know, in a way there might be a perception that that creative your projects, they might have Irish partners, but the, gut, you know, the guts of the work happens internationally or happens on, on in Europe. Mm -hmm. But actually the opposite is, is the, the reality where projects are developed and collaborated you know collaboratively with other agencies with communities with artists yeah here um can you talk a little bit about the kind of depth of that for yeah. you yeah um i mean i think it's with the with the two projects this this one in particular b part really does do that because it's a collaborative project so that means obviously working with different communities of interest and place so for example through um obviously originally through cultural law marie would have built up a lot of those sort of relationships with different organizations like the lantern project i think we saw in the video there was a woman talking about the importance of faith and that would be a relationship through the lantern that, that marie would have built built up and some of the people who are involved in that that project um and then also for example with Grow House, we're working with um, Migrant Rights Centre Ireland. Um, then we're working with academics as well from UCC and TCD. And then we're doing, there's going to be a, we're in the process of doing, we're doing from earlier, a series of workshops out in the community as well. Um, and then, you know, working with some young people on the music making side and, and so on. So I think there's, with these type of projects, this, this, there is quite a, there's a big ripple effect. And also in terms of the the agencies, the next project that we're going to be doing an open call out is for an artist in residency um, in working with a, the traveller community. And that's in partnership with Springboard Family Services. And so they, for them, sort of, you know, it's again, it's a sort of mutual exchange thing as, as well. And potentially because there's these four assemblies that the that are being developed through the Be Part project is the idea that we would be inviting along potentially co-creators, sort of participants, but also maybe some of those cross-sectoral agencies as well as artists such as Marie and so on, who mm -hmm. would all be involved at those events. Great. So there's such yeah, ripple a ripple effect mm -hmm. and such added value for, for having um the major projects and also that like long term over sometimes four years where yeah. It really helps um, your organization work developmentally. And is that something that you want to continue? <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. You know, for example, in, in my head anyway, is that um, next next year, you know, and we're already sort of the conversations. I had a meeting earlier this morning around it, around this residency with um, traveler children, young people and, and families. So we'll be putting that call out earlier on next year. That residency will go go ahead um and then the idea is we we have funding um to to do a more sort of large scale type project 
Um, so it could be around sort of themes and ideas that evolve out from that work that we've already done as well. So it enables us to sort of plan, I think, these sort of projects. Um, I think for any art form, but I think also, you know, certainly working in a field of arts participation, it's, it's really helpful just because I think there's, you know, that value of working long term and, and being able to respond as well rather than because sometimes you might do a project and good ideas evolve but you can't always do anything about them whereas this i guess it, it does give us that flexibility and be able to respond and and work with a community and you know work with an artist and, and so on yeah i suppose in that way a festival is really unique isn't it it's really well suited um to this to this kind of a program I, yeah i think so i mean i guess there's always that it gives you a folk there's a focal point as well and I think there is that thing of, you know, working towards something public, but but also part of the Be Part project is around the, is the, the process is, is very important, but also how do we share that, like Marie was saying earlier, that, that learning, but also from this you would hope, and I know Create have done it very successfully with their CAT program, is around dissemination is going to be really important. Um, not just in terms of the, the public events that, that happened during the festival, but also the other things as well and how might we share share those. Um, yeah. Through a, sort of, you know, a wider public or the sector here as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and Marie, what would your, um, I suppose, having such a, a big access to a big budget, I mean, maybe not, I don't know, I don't know your budget, but I'm sure it's... Um, you know, it allows for ambitious work and allows for kind of more planning in a similar kind of way, more of a developmental look at how you might make it work. And is that exciting to you? I mean, is that something sometimes you feel like you are kind of be working from one one piece to the next piece where this is like a little bit of a longer term? Does it feel feel more exciting, ambitious? I think you definitely and you're right in the sense of um it gives room to go deeper and be more ambitious. And I think the territory kind of demands that to an extent because like the research that, that we've done as a team and that I'm looking deeply into, mm -hmm. it's it's vast um, territory in terms of um, trafficking and then forced labour. It's a much bigger area than one would imagine. And, and, I, and I'd imagine most people realise it's a big area already and the complexity. And I think this thing of um, what's, what's being revealed is the... I suppose the, the intense complexity between being both a victim and criminalised. And so this, this project and this project is allowing to bring in specialists um, and advisors and to go deep into that um, mm. and to, to kind of track back down to, to kind of personal testimonies. So where some projects mightn't allow that, it might be only one layer of research that can be done, whereas this is allowing deeper, deeper layers of research. And like Kath was saying there earlier, having a chance to kind of build relationships um, so that the trust um, can be established and then built on and then jumped from. So it's a kind of triple layer. Um, and although we were all really disappointed at not being able to you know, make the work um, and, and show it this year, in a way, it's kind of allowed for a kind of even bigger deepening of those relationships and, and the, the, the kind of potential. And I think also the other side to it then, beyond the research, is just having a great creative team to work with. And often I'd be kind of juggling everything and trying to do everything myself as, as one practitioner. But being able to bring in specialists, um, that's really exciting. So being able to work with a composer where normally I'd be kind of doing a little bit myself or being able to be, be able to work with the lighting expert. So that really gives the work a kind of a breath to be able to breathe um, for itself, for the work itself. So that's exciting. Um, and and I, I've got Kath who can kind of manage all the logistics mm. and the kind of the producing and, and often... You know, I'd be working on my own and, and have and be doing all that as well, and kind of juggling many, many balls. So it's really fantastic to be able to say, okay, focus on the, the kind of critical thinking, and then the making of the art piece and, and all the other supporting structures. Kath's kind of helping tremendously with that and guiding, and I'm learning from that. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 um, I suppose it's it makes it hard for other projects then to kind of, to kind of go back potentially. That's something I have to think about. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're not going back yet. <laughs> um, we might actually open it out there, just Katie, if you're, I see there's a 
good few uh, questions coming through um, to see if there is a little bit of time to have some more questions or we probably, we might have answered them all, Katie, you're probably. So I think people are being um, a little bit shy. It's, it's um, all just myself in the chat at the moment. So I might, <laughs> <laughs> I might have to, um, I might have to think of a question um or two i mean just maybe more of a comment than anything else is i think the thing that's so interesting about european funding that most people kind of don't necessarily get is it seems like this very big thing um, and it is in terms of you know making the application and developing partnerships but the projects themselves often operate on a very micro kind of community level and it's something you know that that's why I love hearing from projects because it is about kind of projects that engage, you know, on the community level, a lot of times. So, you know, you can, you can see in other ways that there's so much of that work happening here that's been developed over years and years. And I think Ireland is in, you know, a good position in a way to take part in the European fund. So yeah. that's more of a comment, but I mean, I, I would encourage any questions. I mean, people can follow up after, but this is your your live chance. So is there anything coming out? I don't think so. <laughs> so Kath, I guess one thing people always ask us, and I wonder is, you know, you're kind of at that, that nadir or the midst of, you have to kind of handle all the administration, but then you also kind of see all the, artistic activities and you know if you were taking stock at the end is it something that you would do again or you would say this is worth it <laughs> i mean obviously this is the second time i've i've um you know we're going through a creative europe program so yeah i wasn't put off the, the first time i think it i don't know whether we'd ever go for being a lead partner mm -hmm. i think we're in a, a very fortunate position where the you know the Italian lead they've done numerous creative Europe projects so they just they know exactly especially on you know I've had several zoom calls just on the sort of finance side and crying out loud who were our original partner for the, the first creative Europe project were great as two too but they they do it's interesting they still did things slightly differently on the finance I sort of assumed that this is the way we do it but how you know and the Italian lead was like, no, this is what our auditor has advised us. So there's still some, you know, slightly different ways of recording things and systems and, and so on. But I think, yeah, that would be my take from it, unless you really are incredibly well resourced as a team on the administrative side, then uh, certainly on a large scale, you need to build all those in. You know, if you can build all that in, then that's great. But I think for us actually being a partner, I think that's, yeah. I think that that works really well for us you know, um, and I think also what you were saying on the sort of you know this, this, the, there's a definitely there's a flexibility there in terms of the type of projects that you can do and you can design and actually allowing for flexibility and I think that was another thing the Italian lead would do which was really good um, in terms of we just know we have to do six projects over the four years but there's no stipulation exactly when those need to be, um, which again is just you know it's been so so helpful to enable us to sort of move move things around as, as well you know and I guess respond respond to the current context or when there might be a need or what's appropriate. Great. Um, I, what do you think? I think we're. I mean, I I would just maybe take the opportunity as well to um to kind of say again about iportunus mm -hmm. because i think the thing is there there might be um a number of individual artists here and on one hand you can see that absolutely creative europe projects act as these little mini funding hubs for artists and they do kind of commission work mm -hmm. they do provide uh professional development and training for artists within the project but the European Commission now is very committed to funding individual artist mobility. So I've put the link up there. So I would just um, say to people here to maybe follow up with that. We'll probably try to do a short webinar around the process in December when the call is announced, but just 
there have been a number um last year they they run one year of it and i think there were six um successful irish um applications to ipertunus so it, it's one to look out for um mm. but that, that's really it um yeah so i just had one uh, question here um and it says this is probably to both Kath and Marie, but it says, could you speak a little bit about working with international partners during this time of the pandemic? Did this, sorry, did this have a great impact on what was possible or how you work together? So big question. Yeah. Um, in terms of the parts, certainly, yeah, there's been, um, to, there's been a lot of sort of rethinking. Originally our first assembly was, um, Plan to be sort of hosted by the Scottish Sculpture Workshop in May in Lumsden in Scotland, and obviously that that wasn't going to happen. So there'd been a sort of, I guess, a lot of essentially Zoom conversations really in terms of well, what could work? Could we do some sort of digital assembly and so on? And obviously with that, the the lead having to sort of talk to to Brussels as well in terms of you know looking at the plan. Um, looking at changes where they might need to get approval as well. And in the end, um, the plan is to have, there's going to be four assemblies over the, the four years, is to have two next year. Um, so, and then the, we've got a partners meeting planned in Italy. But at this point, we've said that we'll, you know, uh, I'd, love, I'd love to be there. It would be part of their festival as well. We'd be going along to their festival. So it would be like amazing. Um, but I think the reality is that we're going to have to find a way of of, of speaking by by Zoom as well. You know. um, I know, Marie. Do you want to talk a little bit in terms of the sort of because you've you've stepped into a couple of the meetings as an artist, haven't you? And we've had sort of warm up. We had like a sort of, I guess, a sort of Zoom social as well, just for you know for people to start to get to know each other as well. So it's it's having to try and think creatively in these current times where we can't all be in the same group or in the same country. Yeah. And I think, um, Kath, we were talking, weren't we, about the potential for mm -hmm. the work that we've done going forward? Yeah. Because it's, it's, there is this amazing opportunity of, of it being within an international context of adding to Day of the Straws because it's all about a pandemic experience. And we're you know, not assuming that it's the same in Ireland as it is in Italy, as it is in Latvia, as it is in France. You know? um, so, yeah. and whether there might be means to add to the work or rethink that work um, because it's so current and, and the context is, is so live, um, or whether yeah. it's too soon and too raw. I mean, in Ireland, it wasn't. People were ready to, to be very reflective and very generous about their, their lived life experience. But that's something that I suppose um, we're looking at isn't it now in terms of yeah. um, this bigger pool of a community that we're part of um, and because Day of the Straws was all done through video calls or the telephone it, it's there the ground's there it's, um, so I suppose that's that's something that might happen um, that's particular to one small part of the, the B part projects yeah definitely so, yeah I mean I've got a part um, we're doing sort of individual meetings now with the Italian lead so I've got a meeting tomorrow and that's one of the things I'm going to sort of be talking a bit about we've also from our partner Sirius who are local sort of partner who um been talking to them in terms of the possibilities and they've sort of got some really good sort of thinking on that that area as well um and then also have been put in sort of been asking the critical network to think about well what can we do now even to sort of post project in terms of reflection and what if we were to perhaps reimagine this project or create some sort of model for touring internationally to get there again to get their sort of reflections on it um, so it's sort of you yeah that thing of we've got that resource there and trying to find a way to make sure that that we use that as much as possible in terms of that that additional expertise and then, you know, what I think as well, because it's obviously going to be something that we'll be dealing with for a while is, you know, within a project that's still going, you, you start to build a, maybe a methodology or a new model of working and that becomes part of your project. So it's not just about kind of, you know, maybe scheduling the Zoom meeting, but building something around that. Yeah. And then, you know, going into the next program, I think it's probably safe to say that, you know, this is going to be a part of the early years as well. So kind of start to think, 
yes, there's been a period within projects and all of that of reacting, but now it's actually taking the time and thinking, how can we build this into, you know, our longer term plans? Because I think it probably will be part of it for the next yeah. while. Yeah, definitely. Um, we will I certainly, have... sorry, I was going to say, we were certainly encouraged by the Italian lead in the summer, you know, the spring, summer, actually it was more like spring really, to think if we, when we were looking at our activities this year, to perhaps, you know, to to think around, yeah, re, whether it's redesigning or just thinking about, well, what can we do now? What, how, you know, how can we still make work? And how can we still make work with, with communities, you know? Hmm. And I think, Kath, like um, Katie was saying there, you know, in terms of rethinking, uh, just for example, like a Zoom call, and we had that really interesting Zoom, Zoom, Zoom it was it was like a kind of wacky online game show, wasn't it? Something I'd never <laughs> have ever experienced before, but they totally rethought, the B-Part partner rethought how mm. to, um, I suppose, network and how to um, make connections and explore kind of critical thinking but in a really wacky way so it was yeah. really refreshing just to be part of that and probably go, oh god i think i've never done this this is mm. interesting um as opposed to it being a kind of a very fixed methodology that we'd all yeah. get into the groove of they were really rethinking it <laughs> yeah it was light-hearted wasn't it it was like a quiz quiz show format with people dressed up the hosts were dressed up <laughs> and then we all ended up being just put randomly into different rooms smaller rooms you know um and that was nice in terms of getting to know people more and partners people yeah feel feel the fear and do it anyway <laughs> um i just have one more question that came in from leslie in the leisure marts office and she says very exciting work kath and marie uh marie could you describe your engagement with european partners yeah and um thanks leslie and, and it's it's early stage so at the moment as kath was saying it's all been online um, and so the, the, I suppose as Kath is saying, there is hope that we'll be able to kind of go, whether it's, you know, kind of soon in December or whether it's coming next year um, and actually go and kind of meet in person and, and cross fertilise. So, so far, Kath's been obviously championing um, the work that we've been doing together. So she'd have the, the kind of um, very regular face to faces, but the contacts that, the contacts that I've been um, making. Uh, are sitting in on some of the meetings as a, a, um, a I suppose a, a kind of a new artist um, joining the, the team and kind of sharing some of my um, approach and thinking and I suppose um, specific to what we're doing together but I mean I think there's a, there's a real interest in a, a kind of broader critical thinking um, so it's not tied specifically to the piece of work that we're doing together so we we were ending up talking about you know the potential for, uh, um, a digital platform as opposed to meeting in person the things that Kath was talking about there earlier on the pros and cons and I think the B part partners make you feel very welcome to to kind of bring your thinking as an artist into the space um so it's been both a kind of um coming into like the wacky game show <laughs> type experiences which are about networking beginning to meet people beginning to get a sense of what, what who does what where and why and motivations but then also sort of sitting into beginning to sit into the, the criticality of the um, the approach that we part are taking to um, building the, the, the program together. I suppose in terms of like Kath is saying the adaptation. Um, but we're hoping now um, as things move forward and things um, I suppose it becomes more viable as to what can be done, um, especially with our piece of work, um, the smaller piece, the day of the straws. Um, we'd it would be fantastic, Leslie, if people would then um, become not only critically engaged in terms of, this, as Kath was saying, this critical network as an outside eye to, to actually consider that work um, and um, critique it with us, but then also potentially totally rethink it and manifest it as a physical art piece in another country, in another place, and involve um, other participants in the making of that work in a, new, in a totally new way. Or that work book's got eight sections and there's you know there's a potential that one section could go to each country um and the, the team and the partners in that country could say draw on their networks and build a whole new edition um so it's like book chapters almost so there's loads of possibilities but we're just beginning now and i suppose because we've got david straws is a 
a manifest piece. It gives us something we can kind of jump from. Um, so there's that very practical, but then there's also the underbed um, and, and some of the meetings that, you know, Kath has, has um, um, invited me into. Um, I'm kind of sitting, listening carefully, and some I feel more able to kind of speak out. And so hopefully that's not too waffly an answer, Leslie. <laughs> that's great. Um, I th the other thing I was just going to say was, Kath, just before you go, you'd mentioned mm -hmm. you're um, de developing a call out for uh, participants, for artists in, in the future. Um, you, it's probably not, not ready to go now, but can we keep in touch and send it out to artists? Yeah, or potential yeah absolutely. Yeah, that'd be great. So, yeah, I think, um, hopefully before Christmas or certainly in the early new year. That would be the plan. Brilliant. So yeah, artists in residency. Yeah, great. Okay, well, thanks a million. Thank you, Kath, and thank you, Marie, and thanks, Katie. Um, and I think it was a great, really interesting uh, session today. And good luck to everyone for the rest of the day. <laughs> Take care. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.